So a few weeks ago, I was going through my email and stumbled across a recommendation for a movie called The Misty Green Sky, a cautionary sci-fi animation movie. Yeah, more like caution not to watch it. Oh boy, here we go. Amazon Prime proving once more why they are the worst of the worst when it comes to streaming services. You got Netflix, you got Disney Plus, and you got Amazon Prime. Legit, I don't get it. What is the qualification for uploading a movie or a show to Prime? The, the guy who's the quality checker for Amazon Prime going, is your movie in an MP4 format? All right, kid, right this way, right this way. Welcome to the Amazon Prime family. What's that? You got a show about some drunken Russian clowns? Oh, say no more. Welcome to Amazon. I was having second thoughts about the misty green sky, though. I thought to myself, am I being cruel? Am I punching down? Because here's the thing, folks, this movie was essentially made by one person. And I thought, hey, I don't want to be a bully. I don't want to rag on somebody who said, I want to make something. And then me go, hey, look at you, artist guy. Screw you. Beat them up, guys. Ma make fun of them. Laugh at them. Poop on their profile. No, I don't want to do that. But here's the difference, though. If this was up on YouTube for free, I would leave it alone. But here's the thing, it is only, only available on Amazon, and you can only watch it for free if you have a Prime account. If not, you have to rent it for like $1.99, or you have to buy it for $4.99. That is a crime against humanity. I have seen much better stuff on YouTube for free. I'm not saying that people's hard work has to be for free especially from independent creators. But it blows my mind that I see things that are beautiful, independent projects that look much more competent that are up on YouTube versus this garbage with a price tag on Amazon Prime. Come the hell on. So I've decided that I will criticize this movie and for the justice of people who spent money on this film, <clears throat> me, I will bring my hammer of reviewing criticism down upon its brow and bring it to justice. By the way, I will do my best to make sure that I'm being fair. If something is good in this movie, I will give credit where credit is due. But my God, that is going to be tough. Okay, so who's behind this movie? Like I said, it was basically done by one guy, Jack Foster. Really, there's not much to say here. On IMDb, his filmography has him working on like rock and roll documentaries. He is a director. Uh, this was his writing debut with The Misty Green Sky. When I was looking more into this, I discovered his portfolio, which I don't want to seem like I'm picking on him, but most of his animation stuff looks just god awful. Like super awful low tier stuff. I, I don't even know what I'm looking at. This, this looks so trippy. Again, there's nothing wrong with somebody who said, I want to be an editor, an artist, an animator, a writer, okay? That is fine. You are allowed to make content. That is something I will always support. But at the same time, nobody is above criticism. And since Jack here is showing his work as a portfolio, displaying it for the world to see, well, I think that makes it worthy of being critiqued, especially if you are advertising your stuff as a professional. That means you want to get paid, and I don't want to pay you for that. It's so crazy to me you got stuff like Killer Bean, which was also done essentially by one person. And then you've got the misty green sky. This is a testament more to Jeff from Killer Bean and how well he knows his programming, how he knows how to be an artist, how to animate, how to create, how to use all of his talent and facilitate it all into a single film. By the way, looking forward to the sequel, hell yeah. But then you have someone like Jack Foster here who 
clearly has no idea what he's doing with these visuals. He doesn't know how to animate. He doesn't know how to create characters on his own, which is why I discovered he did not make his own assets. He went to either Poser or Daz, both programs that allow you to make human characters that are provided for you. That's how Jack made this movie. Because at first I was like, these characters look like they're from a porn game. Look at them. Come on. Like, look at that. They look like they're from either Second Life. They look like they're from one of those ads you see on those irreputable, unchristian websites. You know the ones I'm talking about. That's what the visuals look like. Jack here took those models, he saw them, and he said, hey, I can make a movie now. And also, I can go to Indiegogo and raise money for it. Yeah, he had an Indiegogo for this. He wanted $10,000. Uh, he got 284, I think. So, yeah, Jack here. You're really stretching, bro. <laughs> and even more so because he said that this was going to be like a trilogy and that this was the first of three. Oh God, makes you wonder what the next two are gonna look like. <laughs> But overall, this is an origin story about a guy who does not understand how to animate. He doesn't know how to master programs because I've seen some amazing things from Daz, from Poser, from Blender, from these programs that offer you characters to work with where you take the models and then you animate them and you can get an understanding of how to use that to your advantage. God bless those programs. They're amazing. But here we have somebody who saw the program and said, all right, I've spent a week doing this now. Let's make a movie. Let's let's put a film on Amazon Prime and let's make it to where their boobs are very jiggly because this is definitely not a fantasy movie from Jack. Not at all. Just stop asking. What are you talking about? It's a film, it's art, and it's going to win the Oscar for best animated movie of 2020, even though it came out in 2016. <laughs> This movie is going to make me go crazy. I'm going mad. You can tell my voice for this video. I'm actually going mad. <laughs> All right. So what's the movie about? <laughs> I watched this film twice. I watched it twice. I watched it like a week ago. And then I watched it last night. And I still don't really know what happened. I'm kind of sitting here dumbfounded where it's like, what? What did I just watch? What was that? What just happened on the screen? Okay, I will try my best. So the setting, we are on an alien planet. It is the future. This planet is just, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You got like this compound. You're introduced to a bunch of humans walking around, hanging out with robots, doing sky yoga, jumping on boxes. It's so weird. But from what I've gathered, and I'm pretty sure about this, our main character is Gwen. She's got red hair. She's got a very interesting face, especially when you see it contort. And we follow her around the compound as we see her life, as we see her go to school. And by the way, the school is just this guy named God teaching her about like life on this planet and what she needs to know. And you can tell that this guy, God, yeah, that is actually his name. God is a very good teacher because look, look, look at the numbers. They're floating in the air. It's so high tech, I'm, I'm blown away. Another thing you'll discover is how the humans on this planet hook up. Now it's not that different from Earth, but here I believe it is that there is a two to one ratio of girls to males. So guys are like hooking up with multiple chicks because you know, that's definitely not part of some sexual fantasy of the creator. Hey, maybe it's not, maybe it's a plot point or it's fetish fuel, you know, whatever floats your boat. So once more, we're following Gwen as she walks around the compound. She's inquisitive. She looks into things that I think she's not supposed to look into. We see other people hooking up around the compound. She's not one of them. We see a bunch of random stuff, just, just completely random things that make no sense. Uh, some weird dog creature runs around, okay? There's a part where a hologram starts playing and it's a guy on the piano with like, I believe it was a gorilla floating below him. It's, it's just it's such, a, such a WTF moment. It's like, what, what does this have to do with anything? It's like directed by David Lynch. Cry for me. Crawl on the floor and cry like a little baby. Don't be happy. 
Don't be happy. Gwen can't stop asking questions. She goes around the compound. She discovers hints of the actual truth because there is a mystery going on here, folks. You won't even believe it. What, what big things are going on that you don't even know about? Your minds are about to be blown, man. It's all a conspiracy, man. That's what the movie's getting at, by the way. This movie is all about what's, what is going on in reality? What are we being lied to about? Gwen calls out God. She's like, you're not God. You're just a guy, aren't you? And he like immediately disappears, just flies away. She sneaks on a spaceship, takes off to a space station, which it's like, okay, I guess there's a space station now. And as she goes to the space station, her clothes disappear. I can't even show this on YouTube. Look, look at this fan service. She's going into space. Her clothes disappear. Okay. And then she's floating around in the space station in her underwear. Come on, bro. What? What is, whose sexual fantasy is this? And of course, being Gwen, she has just the craziest faces along the way. By the way, here's a quick highlight reel of all of Gwen's faces throughout the movie. They're just all over the place. So Gwen's on the space station. She finds some clothes. The space station doesn't realize that she's from the planet. They're like, oh, you're from Earth. Welcome to the station. Walk around. Then there's a bunch of exposition that we discover from scientists, you know, because, you know, this story needs exposition because it doesn't make sense as of right now. And even with exposition, it still doesn't make sense. And by the way, here's one of my biggest WTF moments from the entire movie. So Gwen is sneaking around, listening to the space station scientist, and then this floating head's like, you can't even hear what he's saying. Phineas, when mom sees that you've built a haunted house in the backyard with werewolves and vampires and a giant floating baby head, what's that even about? Not now! So the truth is discovered, and here it is. What happened on this planet was that a bunch of humans came down to the world. They didn't realize that there was like a virus there that is incredibly deadly. So all the adults who landed, they died of it because they were exposed to it, but they had children and the children were born with like an immunity to the virus. So the kids were left on the planet as a bunch of orphans and these scientists would observe them, keep them there because you can't let them come back to Earth or everybody will die. And Gwen is walking around the space station not knowing that she has a virus. And when the scientists discover that there's a breach, they're like, well, the only logical thing we can do here is blow up the space station. Look at this girl scientist. She's like, I don't want to blow up the station. We don't have to do that. Um, time to run and scream at the top of my lungs. And that's no exaggeration, folks. Look at this. Gwen floats back to the spaceship. She sees the space station blow up in orbit. She goes through a wormhole. She arrives at Earth. She's like, you scientists and politicians need to listen to us. We're not just children. I'm infected with the virus. Blow the ship up in orbit before I land on Earth. And it's like, okay, so I get the theme here. The theme of the movie being that we are being looked down upon as children. We are having our thoughts ignored, our points ignored. So then you've got the adults of society being the politicians who are like, oh, well, we'll figure it out. This movie is very much so where it's like, ah, oh, yes, the smart people of society, the scientists, they're ignored while politicians call all the shots. They're the ones who think that they have all the answers and look at everybody else as children. Here's how the film ends. Uh, the humans bring her down to Earth. She's like, no, no, kill me. I'm infected. And the politician's like, you're just a child. What are you talking about? Welcome to Earth. And then she starts crying. And that's the end of the movie, alluding that, that the virus landed on Earth and everyone would eventually die. And, and that's the movie. <laughs> that's for better or for worse. What am I talking about? It's definitely for worse. That's the movie. All right, let's go over my five points. God help me. First, the story. So the main theme for this movie is essentially how there are people in society who are ignored. And Gwen is like, oh, uh, we aren't just children. You should talk to us. You should hear what we have to say. 
Uh, another part of that is how, like, on the science station, you even have a scientist who's like, these politicians call all the shot and we scientists are ignored. So in that regard, I think that's a theme that could potentially work in a story where it's like, okay, uh, where is the real power in society? Okay, it's in the hands of businessmen, lawyers, politicians, versus those who actually have a better idea of society, of a better tomorrow, being like scientists and whatnot. So that's what the movie's getting at. That's what they're trying to say. They just do it in a very awful way and take a very long time to do so. I swear, like this film, and I, I will address this again later on in the video, because you're gonna hear it a bunch. This movie didn't have to be an hour and 20 minutes long. It could have been at max 20 minutes long, if even 10 minutes, and that's it. You don't have to make a movie out of this. There is so much padding. There's so much nothing that goes on of long stretches of just nothingness, and not even in a creative way. It's like, okay, here's naked Gwen floating through a hallway for the next few minutes. And that's just to eat up time and, and I guess keep us busy until the next part of the film where it actually moves along with the plot. So a lot of nothingness, just a bunch of emptiness in this film. As far as characters go, Gwen is obviously the main character. And outside of that, I don't really know of any other characters in the film. Like they were all so forgettable. They all look the same especially the people on the planet. It's like, who are you folks? You're a bunch of background characters from Second Life, as far as I can see. The only other characters I can really recall as of right now are God, Gorilla Piano Hologram, and then the scientists on the space station. And that's really it. Everybody else was like, who are you? Or what, what's the significance of you? I, I don't even know. I can't even recall who you were. Also, it's important to address the conflict in this movie, as far as like what drives the plot forward. And the conflict being that, okay, here's the mystery. What's going on with this planet? And I like stories like that, where they slowly reveal the plot, where it's like, oh, that's what's going on here. That's cool to work your way up to that point where the audience finds out the truth. And this movie attempts to do that, where the truth being, oh, we're a colony of infected humans and the space station and Earth are keeping us in the dark because we are carrying a deadly virus. That could have worked. I think that actually is the strongest point of the movie is just the concept, but it was executed in a very awful way and took way too much time to get its point across. So overall with the story from the characters to the themes, to the plot and all that stuff, it was just a bunch of nothing going on, a very awful, boring, slow pace. And if they were trying to attempt to have a slow burn of the mystery, uh, if that was its objective, well, guess what? Failure. 20 minutes into the film, you lost me. I just didn't care. It was so hard to watch. And that's not even including other offenses on this list being like the voice acting, the editing, the visuals. The story alone was just broken from the get-go. Such a small plot in the vastness of a way too long movie. Next, there is the voice acting. I mean, if you want to call it that. <laughs> you must always, always avoid the old village. But of the hundred girls and 30 boys that live on Earth, None have ever been sick. Avoid the old village. You must always, always avoid the old village. It's stale. There's no emotion. These are obviously amateurs. And it just, ugh. I mean, when you have that voice talking throughout the movie, it's so grating. It just makes you want to leave the film that much faster. There wasn't a single good voice actor. There was not a single good voice actor in this entire movie, except for the floating head. He was great. Didn't know what he said, but he was great. Master Yoda. Next, there is the dialogue. Just like the voice acting, it was boring and stale. It doesn't feel natural. It feels like a bunch of robots talking back and forth to one another. Not a single conversation sounded like it would actually happen in real life. Like, I, I've never seen human beings talk to each other like this. I've never seen them carry on a conversation where it sounds like Skyrim or Elder Scrolls NPCs talking back and forth to one another. Josh has taken Yuki as a wife.
But isn't Josh already with Dinah? <laughs> because of the 30 men to 70 women ratio, some couples were doubling up. I love dogs. Doesn't everyone? Bye. Watch Next, there is the editing. So I watched this film initially with a friend and we heard a sound effect. Uh, here it is, uh, I'll point it out. That, that's the sound effect. Okay, so I looked at my friend and I said, oh, oh my God, they are going to be using the sound effect throughout the entire film. Let's do a drinking game out of it. Well, he doesn't drink, I do. And uh, yeah, about like seven shots later, I was like, oh man, thank God we made this game happen because I needed alcohol for this experience just to get me through it. But yeah, <laughs> the sound effects, bad. They are sound effects you get from a library, uh, things that already exist. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with using gate.wave, but when it comes to like overusing it, like good Lord. Same thing with the royalty-free music, where it's like, yeah, you did not make this music yourself. You are using it from existing libraries. And it doesn't really match up well with what's going on on the screen. Well, to be fair, you could literally have like John Williams or Howard Shore doing the music for this movie, and it still wouldn't be enough to save this movie. And finally, we have the animation. Oh boy, was this uh, quite the ride. Uh, as I said before, this was most likely done with Daz or with Poser. And, and if not those, it was a program that had pre-existing assets for you to build your own characters and animate them. So as far as like constructing 100% original stuff, no, this Jack guy did not do that. He went to a program where they already provided what he needed to work with. And then he took it in his own direction, which was a very bad direction at that. One of the biggest crimes in this movie that just bothered the hell out of me was how early on in the film, Gwen's outfit and her hair change every other scene. That is no exaggeration. Leading up to the part where she flies to space, every scene that she would appear in, she is like changing her outfit. Okay, so she's looking into a mystery, new outfit. Okay, now she's walking around the compound, new outfit, new hairstyle. It's so jarring. There were parts where I'm like, who's that? That's that's the main character? Wait, what? Why does she look so different? There is no purpose for her to change the way that she did. Maybe when she went into space, which let's be honest here, that was a bit much too. For every other scene on this compound, like no bro, this looks like it's your playing with your Sims character and changing their outfit every other moment. Oh, here's another thing. So I don't know if this was by design from Jack or if it was a mistake, but the chest on these characters, especially Gwen, it looks like they're having a heart attack. Like they just ran a marathon and then they hopped on screen to perform. Look at their chest. It's and throughout the entire film, it looks like they're hyperventilating. It is ridiculous. I don't know if that was an option that Jack turned on for his animation, but it does not work. It is incredibly distracting. Also, what you would think is a shirt is just a skin over the chest. It's like, okay, I can see her nipples. I can see her breast. It's not even really a shirt. It's just painted onto her body. And then as far as Gwen's design and the later part of the film, when she's on the space station, her outfit looks like an off-brand Lilu from The Fifth Element. So the character animation itself, I wouldn't say it was like, oh, disgusting, the worst thing ever. Obviously, I've seen worse, <clears throat> troll land, but as far as the character designs go, as far as most of the movement goes, it's like this is very much so from an amateur. Someone who does not understand the program, like they know just enough to get it off the ground, but not enough to actually like master it, not enough to be competent. This is a very incompetent movie. It's like the guy said, okay, that's enough learning. I spent two days on this. Let's make a film and make people pay for it. The backgrounds are awful. There are moments where the background, like you see the buildings moving with the sky backdrop, and it's so jarring to me. 
it's like, wait, what? what's moving here? What's going on? I, I, I feel like I want to throw up from how dizzy I'm becoming from looking at the background move with the sky behind it. Ugh. The textures are bad. The particle effects are bad. Everything, just everything in this film is bad. It still just blows my mind to the nth degree that Amazon looked at this and said, you deserve a spot on our streaming services. <laughs> All right, so how would I improve the film? As I said, it did not need to be an hour and 20 minutes long. This could have been just 10 minutes, done. Something super short and sweet and to the point. And then you could have uploaded it to YouTube and build yourself a name or reputation on there. I've seen SFM videos from folks who do TF2 stuff that looks just leagues above this, just so much higher quality. And these folks do it for fun and upload it for free up on YouTube. Versus this guy who's asking for like, what, five bucks to buy this film on Prime? No, that's a crime. That is incredibly slimy. If the story was better, let's say that this guy, Jack, was an amazing writer and the story just blew my mind. Just wow. You are the J.R.R. Tolkien of our time. Then maybe I would have been like, okay, you get a pass. But that wasn't the case. This was a bad story, very stretched out, just nothing really going on. It could have been condensed down to a 10 minute short where it's like Gwen wakes up on the planet. She's in the mystery of it all where she's looking around and she's like, something doesn't add up. The teachers are lying to us. Why are we this way? She starts to discover like remnants of the humanity that was once on the planet. And then she sneaks onto the ship and heads up to the space station. And then the truth is discovered there of like, oh, we are a species who are infected and we have to be left on the planet. And then she's like, no, that's wrong. The truth needs to be released. It needs to be told. And then like have the scientists blow up the space station. That was so utterly dumb. Like why put on space suits? Why aren't you guys wearing hazmat suits? What What's up with that? They go down to the planet naked. They're walking around the station naked, not naked, but with no protection. Not like that. It, it just doesn't make sense. There's just so many flaws in logic and how this film progresses and how it takes the plot. And it's like, ooh, look how deep we are. And it's, I'm sitting on the couch drunk going, nah, this is stupid. So overall folks, this is a bad movie. It's probably the worst thing I've ever seen on Amazon Prime. And that's really saying something. We are gonna have a wonderful time together. They only have a few titles that are worth a damn, but the majority of it's just like this massive diarrhea of awful low quality content. And it's a nightmare, but for someone like me, I guess it's a silver lining because I like watching bad stuff that can make me laugh. But in this regard, with the misty green sky, that wasn't the case. Not funny, did not laugh. Jack, I do give you credit. You tried. You were way in over your head. I think asking for money for it was a bit much. That being said, it's like, yo, dude, keep trying. Take some time to understand the program. Tighten your stories. More often than not, I will support independent creators. I cheer for them. They are the underdogs. But in this particular case, putting it up on Amazon for a price, that's kind of dumb. And then not taking the time to really tighten your story, learning how to animate your characters, to design them visually, just getting a grasp on what you're doing. I think you rushed this out because you had a passion project and the final result is just straight up diarrhea. Yep, folks, that's the movie. If you wanna watch something terrible and, and wear a, a mark of honor for suffering the worst thing on Prime, then I recommend this movie. If you don't want to have an aneurysm, then I, uh, I would say stay away, stay far away from this movie. Like get on a spaceship and then blow yourself up on it. It's the only sure way to keep yourself safe from the misty green sky. Got a blast.